So one of the most interesting parts of the negotiations now will be around how we create a process which encourages countries to do more. We can't force them to do more, but we can create a process by which they uh, are under pressure, as it were. So the first thing that we have to do is to get a five-year cycle in place. Now, that looks like it's going to happen. Most countries now seem to be reconciled to the idea that every five years they have to come up with new mitigation uh, pledges for a further five years. So most of the pledges now are for 2025 or 2030. So we'd be looking in 2020 to have another round of nationally determined contributions coming forward for 2030 and 2035. Um, we've also got well established now a principle of no backsliding, which means that countries can't produce future emissions pledges, which are worse than their current ones. What we haven't yet got, and what will be one of the negotiating uh, issues in Paris, will be can we get a, a, a requirement of progressivity, which is the, the general term now being used for improving, strengthening your commitments. And the other thing we haven't yet got, which will again be uh, under discussion in Paris, is a, uh, a provision to revise your existing targets. If you've got a target, as many countries do now, for 2030, that's a very long way ahead. And if that remains fixed and unchanged all the way through to 2030, then we will not be on track for two degrees. So one of the uh, issues will be, will countries be given the opportunity and encouraged to look again at their 2030 targets, perhaps in 2018 or 2020 or even 2023, so that we can keep the world on a progressive path to improving uh, these targets over time? That's going to be, I think, in many ways, the key issue in Paris.